Hi everyone, let's take a look at this differential equation, dy by dx cos x plus y sin x equals sine to the 4 of x. And the first thing we want to do towards solving this is just rewrite it in a slightly different but equivalent form, where the coefficient of dy by dx is just 1. In other words, we're trying to make it look like dy by dx on its own, plus some function of x, which I'm going to call p of x times y, is equal to some other function of x, which I'm going to call q of x. Okay, so the reason for doing this is that there exists a standard method for solving an equation that is in this form called using an integrating factor, and we'll see how that works in a few moments. So all we have to do to get it into that form is divide through by cos x, because then we're going to end up with dy by dx plus, uh, the next term is going to be y times sine x over cos x, which is just tan x, right? So y tan x is going to be sine to the 4 of x divided by cos x, all right? So now, um, what can we do with this? Well, we want to find out our integrating factor. So the way this works is that we basically multiply a whole equation by a special function, which is e to the integral of p of x <clears throat> with respect to x. Now, if you've never seen this method before, this might look a bit mysterious. Um, we're going to take this result as a given that this, uh, that this is going to help us. If you've never seen this and you would like me to do a video on why this works, then feel free to let me know. Um, for now, just note that our p of x here is tan x, right? Because that is the thing that appears multiplied by the function y itself. And so we're just trying to find e to the integral of tan x dx, okay? So that is e to the integral of tan x um, dx. So um, this turns out, well, in fact, let's, de let's derive this fully, right? We can write tan as sine over cos, so let's do that. That is e to the integral of sine x over cos x uh, dx. And now I'm going to add a couple of minus signs in for reasons that I'm going to explain in a moment. I'm going to put a minus sign at the front and another one in front of this sine x. And I haven't changed anything by doing that. The reason for doing that is that the top of this fraction is now the derivative of the bottom, right? Minus sine x is the derivative of cos x, which means that we can directly do this integral and find that it is e to the minus, um, sorry, e to the minus uh, natural log of cos x, right? Because that's the, you know, if you, if you have a, an integrand of the form f dash of x over f of x, in other words, if it's a derivative over the function itself, then you get the natural log of that function. All right, now um, notice also that we can use a, a law of logs here. So we can write that as e to the natural log, e to the natural log of um, cos x to the minus one. Okay, so we take the prefactor of minus one, turn it into a, uh, into a power inside the um, argument. And um, notice that we can also write cos x to the minus 1, in other words, 1 over cos x, that is just sec x. So e to the ln of sec x, which by definition of natural log is just sec x. So there we go, that's our, our integrating factor. All right, so um, let's multiply through by that. We're going to get sec x dy by dx plus y sec x tan x. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm going to leave the sec as 1 over cos, because we've already got a cos there, um, and so we can write that as sine to the 4 of x over cos squared of x. Okay, now this is why the integrating factor is useful. If you look at the left-hand side, and you happen to know the derivative of sec x, um, which is sec x tan x, uh, then you might be able to spot that this looks like these, both of these terms on the left-hand side combined look like they've come from application of the product rule. In particular, we can write the entire left-hand side as d by dx of y sec x, right? Because if we use the product rule, we would have one term, which is <clears throat> dy by dx times sec x. That's that first one. And our other term would be y times d by dx of sec x, but d by dx of sec x is sec x tan x, All right? So uh, my, by multiplying through by this integrating factor, we've put um, the left-hand side into this um, 
kind of nice form where it's the derivative of a product. Okay, so um, with this uh, right hand side, we are ultimately going to want to integrate it because we've got a d by dx on the left hand side and we want to undo that d by dx. And so the first, I'm going to take the first step towards that now um, and notice that, well, sine to the 4x is the same as um, sine squared x all squared, but sine squared x can be written as 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, and so <clears throat> the numerator of that fraction is 1 minus cos squared x all squared divided by cos squared x. All right, so now we want to integrate both sides with respect to x to undo this derivative on the left side. And so if we do that, we are going to end up with y sec x, okay, is the integral of all of this stuff um, here, right? And so uh, let's actually just expand those brackets. We're going to have, um, our first term is just going to be 1, then we're going to get a minus 2 cos squared x, and then we're going to get a plus um, cos to the 4x, and then we're going to divide that whole thing by cos squared. Okay, so we can then split this up term by term to do the integration. 1 over cos squared is sec squared, so sec squared of x, all right? Now, in this middle term, the cos squareds cancel, so that just becomes 2, and then the final term, we get cos to the 4 divided by cos squared, which is just cos squared of x, right? So we're integrating all of that stuff uh, with respect to x. And two of these terms, uh, we can actually uh, integrate immediately because it's a standard result that the integral of sec squared is tan, okay? Um, and so uh, what we can do is write that as tan x, uh, minus two just integrates to minus two x. And then we just have to think about how to deal with this um, cos squared x term. The usual way to do that is through a, a double angle identity. Uh, so we know uh, there is a double angle identity that cos 2x, um, let me write this a bit further to the left, so cos of 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1, okay? And so we can use that, this identity, to express cos squared in terms of cos 2x, all right? So let's do that. Our next line is going to be that y sec x is equal to tan x minus 2x. Um, and so cos squared x is going to be a half of 1 plus cos 2x, just by rearranging that identity. Okay, so we're going to get half of the integral of um, 1 plus cos of 2x with respect to x. Um, and okay, we can now we can straightforwardly do those last two integrals, right? So we've got tan x minus 2x. Um, okay, so we have uh, a 1 here. 1 just integrates to x, so we're going to get a half x because it's a prefactor of a half. And cos of 2x integrates to a half sine of 2x. Okay, from the chain rule, we get that extra factor of a half. But there's already a factor of a half there, and so in total, we are going to get a quarter of sine 2x. And now, because we've done our last integration, we better add a, a constant of integration here, uh, which we can call c. Okay, so we're pretty much done, but uh, we can actually write this uh, in an explicit form, so just y equals some function of x. Our final answer, we're going to get it just by multiplying up by cos x, because remember, sec x is just 1 over cos x. So if we multiply both sides by cos x, we're going to find that y um, is equal to, all right, let's look at this term by term. We take our tan x, Take our tan x and multiply it by cos x, um, we get sine x, because tan is sine over cos, um, and so that first term just becomes sine x. Then, what we can do is combine this minus 2x and this minus a half x to get minus 3 halves of x, then multiply it by cos x to get minus 3 halves of uh, x cos x. All right, and um, finally, uh, we've got, sorry, not quite finally, two more terms to go. We've got a quarter sine 2x, and so that is simply going to become um, plus a quarter um, cos x sine of 2x, and then our arbitrary constant c multiplied by um, cos x. So there you go, that works out quite nicely. Um, see you again soon to go through some more maths or physics.